This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Atlantis Treasure Planet, The Road to El Dorado, Titan AE. Now, what do all these movies have in common? Well, a, a lot of things, but one thing for sure is that they all bombed at the box office. And not only that, but all of these movies are now considered classics and beloved by so many people. We don't really see these 2D animated adventure movies like this anymore. And there is a new movie I want to add to this list. And that is of course, Sinbad. No, no, not that Sinbad. And this movie people have been yelling at me to cover for quite a while. I mean, it makes sense because I've covered so many movies exactly similar to this in so many different ways. But Sinbad was a complete and utter failure for many reasons. It is actually considered to be one of DreamWorks' hugest flops, losing loads and loads of money. Not only that, but because of this movie, this was like the deciding point for DreamWorks to be like, all right, guys, 2D animation, it ain't gonna work no more. It's, it's not gonna work. I mean, everyone was moving in the CG direction and I think this was just like the nail in the coffin for 2D animation, which is very sad for me because I love 2D animation. We need to bring it back, please. Another thing that all these movies had in common is even though they completely bombed at the box office, they never failed to make a video game for it. And because I like to suffer, I'm gonna be playing the Sinbad game over at my Twitch if you wanna go watch that after you're done with this video. But you wanna know something that isn't this depressing? Today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now we live in a world where the internet is king. Websites are something that all people need for all walks of life. And Squarespace is a place for that, a website builder that makes things as simple as a few clicks. Now, if you guys have never heard of Squarespace, it's an incredible website builder that takes all the confusion and pain out of building a website. Making a website is really important for all types of people. You know, maybe you're starting a business, maybe you're wanting to do a podcast, uh, maybe you just want a website just to post pictures of your dog. Like, who knows? But Squarespace has everything in one location. With, Square, with Squarespace, you get an extreme amount of pre-built layouts you could choose from, and they are arranged in a way that makes creation completely streamlined and very easy. You could add things to your website, such as text, videos, photos, audio, products, newsletter signups, appointments, calendars, tour dates, menus, and the list goes on and on. If you think it, it's probably on Squarespace. And it also has fantastic podcast support, which we all know everyone's doing a podcast. So I mean, perfect. And the main reason why I like Squarespace is it gives the creative control of the person themselves because you yourself get to control how it looks. If you have an idea, if you have a concept, you can make that yourself and anyone can do it. And when you guys have created that website, you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brian Piggy. You get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So back to the movie, let's talk about why it bombed, why it did so terribly. Like hundred, hundred million dollar loss. Like that's wild. 9-11, yeah, 9-11, Se um, seriously, that, that, that's one of the reasons it did bad. Well, you see, because of 9-11, Islamophobia was banging, right? <laughs> it, was, it was on the rise at an all time high. And the story that this movie was based off of is an Arabic sailor specifically coming from Baghdad. And for that reason, DreamWorks actually decided to completely whitewash the entire movie which led to a lot of people getting upset. A lot of the reasons why people were mad is kind of hilarious because DreamWorks really just had their hands tied because if they went because if they went full authentic, did their Arabic stuff, people would get very upset for those reasons. But if they whitewash it, people get upset for those reasons as well. And it goes on because for example, a lot of people were upset because they deemed it too childish, which personally, I'm a little bit in that boat and I'll explain that in a second, but they're upset because it's about a bunch of like dark mythological stuff. It should be more uh, quote unquote realistic, right? People should die. And that's where I am on this, honestly, is I feel like if people just died, some of these extras that no one cares about, if they just died occasionally, there would be way more stakes. It would be a lot more suspenseful but no one ever died. Like there's these crazy, ridiculous situations that would make no sense for anyone to survive, but somehow every single person on the ship gets out scot-free, no problems whatsoever. And I feel like that was a big missed opportunity to add a huge amount of suspense. I wanna watch people die. 
That, that's all I'm saying. I want to see people die. Like, <laughs> blame me. Like, who cares, right? Sue me. But on the other foot, we have people who deem it too adult. And then we bring in Eris. For those who've watched the movie, Eris was probably your sexual awakening. Because a lot of parents believed Eris was too goddamn sexy. I guess a few dads were just popping chubs while watching the movie and just got a little bit upset. And what's funny is Michelle Pfeiffer, the actress who voiced Eris, she herself said that the character was a shell of what she originally was. Because at the beginning, apparently Eris was way more sexual, like over the top sexual, and then they dumbed it down once, then they dumbed it down twice, then they kept doing it over and over, where Michelle Pfeiffer was legitimately saying like, hey bro, you could just fire me. Like, I this is kind of goofy, I don't want to do this anymore. And then one of the biggest issues, I would say probably the main issue, why it failed so poorly is, uh, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow. Sinbad was unfortunately released a week before one of the biggest pirate movies of all time. And that kind of made it a little baby in comparison. Inevitably, there were a lot of comparisons between Jack and Sinbad. Obviously, people deem Jack the more epic pirate. But I mean, there are some similarities, sure, but their differences are very vast. Now, me personally, what do I think about the movie? I think it's got a lot going for it. Honestly, it has way more potential than anything else. But there's a lot I loved about this movie, especially as a child. But growing up as an adult, you really start to see the glaring issues going on with this movie. And it honestly is kind of depressing seeing how much wasted potential is in this movie. And I would like to mention uh, bringing in a very strong female lead was a nice touch, you know? Touching on subjects such as misogyny really felt like a pretty big thing for that time, so I appreciate that. But this movie has a one hour and 20 minute runtime. I would say probably one hour and like five to 10 minute a runtime without credits. But the reason I compare it to Atlantis, Treasure Planet, Titan AE, Road to El Dorado is just the adventure, right? The you don't know what's gonna happen next type dealio. Seeing all these crazy mythical creatures having to battle frozen eagles, sirens, giant fish, things that defy our sense of nature. I feel like this type of movie just doesn't get made anymore. I mean, we have Moana, right? That, that was a pretty good one. We got Sea Beast, that was a pretty good one, but I don't know. I feel like these movies are kind of lost to the past. But anyway, let's get into this movie a little bit. The movie begins with Eris, who is the goddess of discord. She is after the Book of Peace, which as it just so happens, so is Sinbad as a pirate. So Sinbad attempts to steal the Book of Peace. He happens to run into his old friend, who is apparently the captain of the ship, while also being the prince of the kingdom of Syracuse. I feel like the whole beginning of this movie was insanely rushed, but honestly, it didn't bother me too much. I mean, again, you know, hour and 20 minute runtime, including credits, they really had to cram a lot into this movie. It would have benefited greatly with like an extra 15, honestly, 30 minutes just to give these characters some time to get built because I don't understand their relationship. Like it kind of bleeds away and I forget about it after a little while, but all that happened is Sinbad goes on a boat, starts pirating, starts stabbing people. It's like, oh, hey, childhood friend. we're Now we're best friends. We're best friends forever. I haven't seen you in 10 years. What's our past? I don't know. Also, this book of peace that Sinbad and Eris are after. Like, what the heck, what, what the heck in frick is this thing? What does it do? The only thing that is said in this movie is that it brought peace and harmony to Syracuse. How? What did it do? What is this, what prosperity did it bring? It's never really explained. Like, it feels like there's nothing at stake here. Like, are we talking Crystal Heart from Atlantis where if it's stolen, everyone dies? Like, that was a big deal. Because after it's stolen, nothing bad happens to the kingdom. The only thing that happens is it's just less bright. So like, everyone's fine. So what's the big deal? Like, I mean, sorry, I know I'm complaining a lot already, but really, those are kind of the two big things. And it would have easily been solved if DreamWorks just added two, maybe three extra scenes. Would have made this movie so much better. But regardless, let's move on. I will admit though, in the short run time, the movie does a great job of making the characters likable and also unlikable. A lot of guys in Sinbad's crew I really enjoyed, especially Kale, voiced by Dennis Haysbert. And throughout the movie, yes, I constantly was hearing the Allstate commercial. This is Allstate, Stan. 
Are you in good hands? Oh, and the doggo! Oh, I can't forget doggo. Best boy, slobbery boy, best doggo. Look at the dog. And then we have Sinbad, voiced by Brad Pitt. And his character, you know, he's charming. He's likable. But at the same time, you want to punch him in the face throughout the entire movie because of the things he does. I mean, he's a pirate. It's kind of a part of it. Like, you could kind of say the same thing for Jack Sparrow. Like, you know, he does a lot of things that make you want to punch him in the face occasionally. But as Sinbad tries to steal the Book of Peace, Eris brings down a giant sea monster to destroy the ship. But with the great teamwork of Sinbad and friend Proteus, they were able to kill the sea beast, but Sinbad was knocked into the ocean and Eris sucked him down and made him a little bubble and talked to him. He's like, hey, bro, you're going to steal the book of peace from me. You're going to make a lot of money. OK, we're going to do that. Cool. Cool. All right. See you. So they both head to Syracuse with his old friend. And because Proteus is so fond of Sinbad, I mean, Sinbad literally just tried to raid his entire ship and kill everyone and steal the book of peace. But he's like, hey, come to the kingdom. You know, we're best friends now. But this leads to a lot of bad shit. First off, Proteus is like, hey, check out my new fiance. And Sinbad goes, she's mine. She's mine now. I'm taking her. Okay, is that cool? Sinbad down bad. So anyway, Eris ends up sneaking in and then stealing the Book of Peace as Sinbad. And at first I was kind of confused about this, but I remember at the beginning when she was talking to him in the bubble and he goes away, she starts laughing as like, <laughs> He's so gullible. So I think she just set up this whole situation so she could steal the book and then frame Sinbad, have him killed, and then just have the book for free, right? But Proteus being the absolute Giga Chad that he is, he's either a Giga Chad or completely an idiot, one of the two. He says, I believe Sinbad didn't steal the book. So he stakes his life on it. So they end up giving Sinbad 10 days in order to find the book or Proteus will die. So yeah, there's a little bit at stake here. So now our journey begins with Sinbad headed to Tartarus in order to meet with Eris in order to get the Book of Peace. And guess who stowed away on board? None other than the fiance of Proteus that Sinbad was eyeing earlier. I would like to mention one thing that made this a little less horrible is the fact that we discover that it's actually an arranged marriage. So Proteus and her, like they're together, but they're not like together together, I, I guess we could say. It's a really risky love triangle that DreamWorks is throwing at us, but I like it, I, li I like it. But anyway, Marina, voiced by Catherine Zeta-Jones, sewed away in order to make sure that Sinbad follows through with the mission. That's what she says, but you know, we all know, we, we all know what's going on here. We all... <laughs> And throughout the movie, we get that classic, uh, oh, I don't like you, but I really secretly like you. Are they, are they gonna, are they not gonna situation? Constantly fighting, hating each other when we all, you know, see what's really going on underneath. But throughout their adventure, we get some really cool moments in this movie. For example, at the beginning, we go through an area called the Dragon's Teeth, where they encounter a bunch of sirens. And thank God Marina came along because while all the men are getting their, their, their dangles hard, by listening to the sirens, Marina, along with Doggo, your best dog. Look, look at that. I mentioned the Doggo earlier. Look at him. Look how cutie of the slobbery doggy. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, her along with Doggo was able to escape. And these are the parts where I believe would benefit greatly if we got some horrific deaths. There's no death here. And I know y'all are saying eh, it's made for kids. First of all, no, made for all audiences. Second of all, has have you guys seen Atlantis? A lot of people died. A lot of people died in that movie and that made it better. I'm going to be honest, but I don't know. Am I a terrible person? Every time I see someone get miraculously saved, I'm a little bit upset. I want him to die. Like, what, what do you say? Like, what do, we, what do you say? I'm crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm a psychopath just because I want to see people die in a movie. That's normal. But the next trial they go through that Eris throws at him is a giant angler fish. They believe to be an island, which I thought was cool because, you know, giant island creature everyone thinks turtle right but a freaking angler fish huh well okay but again they all miraculously make it out alive next one which is my personal favorite is giant frozen bird pokemon creature i don't know what you call it i know i could probably look it up and figure out what what mythical creature is but that's it's gonna take a while and honestly i prefer the name giant frozen bird pokemon creature I, whatever and honestly this whole scene like the winter scene the bird with the snow falling off of its wings and shit it was just cool it was a cool all around looking scene i liked it a lot and we even get a decent character moment with uh sinbad ended up saving marina's life we even get that cliche moment where them landing on top of each other they're staring into each other's eyes and then it's like oh damn i didn't know you i didn't know i didn't know you were chill like that shit 
Damn. I didn't, I didn't notice how good you looked until I was on top of you. <laughs> then we finally make it to the world's end, which I want to mention, there's a little joke in here that I really appreciate and all the flat earthers out there will really appreciate. Hey up, it's flat. Made me giggle a little bit. Maybe giggle. But with this updraft of the end of the earth, they ended up being able to float into the entrance of Tartarus. But the ship wasn't able to fit, so only Marina and Sinbad were able to make it through. And holy shit, Tartarus is kind of cool. Like, you know, I'd move in here. How the sand kind of moves around like the ocean, the different landscapes, the ancient statues, very pleasing. So anyway, Eris again sexually harasses Sinbad some more, and then Eris ends up making a bet with him, and all he has to do is answer Eris's question correctly, which, you know, obviously he doesn't. And the question was, if he doesn't end up getting the book, will he leave Proteus to die? Which obviously he says, no, I will go back and save him, which Eris uh, sussed him out and realized it was a lie. So she ends up kicking him out of Tartarus, which this is the moment of the movie I realized what this movie really is about. It ain't about the adventure. It ain't about saving the freaking Syracuse city from with the with the peace book. It ain't about the Proteus, uh, Marina, Sinbad love triangle. It's about Sinbad. It's about how he's grown to be a harsh, careless, selfish person. And he realizes that's not who he is deep down and he doesn't like what he sees. This whole movie was basically a character reflection to Sinbad himself to show him what a shitty person he's become. And these trials where Eris believes in her mind that she's trying to take advantage of him being a terrible person is actually the thing that brings out the good in him. So after he answers the question wrong, he was kicked out of Tartarus, realizing there's nothing he could do. He doesn't have the book. And the main thing he realized is he lied in there. He knew for a fact that he would leave Proteus to die. And he didn't like that. He didn't like the concept of him actually doing that which was a big character moment for him. So he decides he's gonna own up to it. He's gonna go back and he's going to sacrifice himself to save Proteus and take responsibility for the situation. Basically, he realized like, hey, I'm kind of a dick. So anyway, he goes back, he saves Proteus, he lays his head on the execution table as the dude holds the sword up into the air and then he swings it down and poof, the sword turns into dust. Eris comes out and she's like, bro, the fuck? Like, we had a thing going on? Like you, you, you're supposed to not come back. All right. I made the, the binding vow or whatever, the cross the heart shit. Now I got to give you a book. You're kind of a dick. So basically Eris got all upset and threw a fit because she wasn't able to predict what Sinbad was actually going to do. And what she believed Sinbad to be isn't actually who he really was. And he changed for the better. So with great anger, she did end up giving him the book and all is happy. And again, what the hell does this book of peace do? Like all that happened was it just made everything bright again. Like everyone was fine. No one was complaining. No one was starving. Everyone looked happy. It was just darker. I'll, it, that'll always bother me. Anyway, about the Marina Proteus situation before we end this up. Another example of how Proteus is either really, really stupid or just an amazing dude. I, I honestly can't tell. He tells Marina to go with Sinbad on the open sea for he knows that's where her heart lies. And that's kind of how the movie ends. She goes off with Sinbad, happy ending. So the movie is really simple on the surface, classic adventure movie. But then you realize this wasn't a rescue mission. This wasn't a, a mission to save the city. It was a mission to save Sinbad. Ironically, the thing that Eris was trying to do was to destroy him by using his terrible personality against him, but it actually backfired. Honestly, still today, I feel like this movie is a great watch. It's really fun to watch. There's a lot of cool shit, a lot of fun animation. Yeah, there's some, you know, weird CG monsters in there that look kind of goofy, but you know, it's an early movie. Lots of flaws, but it's just a fun ass movie. I feel like you could definitely lock it into that list of those movies, which I will plop in a tier list of those movies right here, you know, in case you guys care, you probably don't, probably don't, but I'll put it here anyway. And I feel like we're missing a lot of these types of movies. You know, I wish we could bring this stuff back. Stop making sequel, stop making sequel after sequel. All right. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with the goddamn Kung Fu Panda shit. I heard it's bad. I haven't watched it yet. I don't want to watch it, but apparently it's bad. Remake after remake. It's getting exhausting guys, it's getting exhausting. But I'm going to bring you guys the good shit. All right. I'm going to go find the good shit and bring it to you. So you can nom on that. Mm -hmm. Have a good day.